Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Our gospel reading this morning is going to be from the Gospel of John. It's the 12th chapter and the 20th through the 33rd verses. Listen this morning as God speaks. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me... The Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. This is the word of the Lord. Now, I've never seen it myself, but I'm told that it's a fairly common thing for uh, churches to have the King James version of what the Greeks said, uh, either carved on pulpits or on a plaque in the pulpit where only the person behind the pulpit can see it. Um, it, It's basically, it says, Sir, we would see Jesus. Uh, And though the language is outdated these days because not everybody behind the pulpit's a sir anymore, uh, thankfully, it should be probably be the Southernism. Y'all, we would see Jesus. But these plaques, to me, serve as a reminder or perhaps a challenge uh, to the preacher to keep in mind the whole purpose for being behind the pulpit in the first place. Uh, we want to see Jesus. Now, we don't know a lot about these Greeks uh, who wanted to see Jesus. Were they at the pet fa- were they at the Passover festival because they were Jewish converts? Or were they at the festival as unconverted pagan sightseers? Did they come all the way to Jerusalem specifically and only to meet with Jesus? I don't know. Why did they talk to Philip? Again, I don't know. Maybe they didn't speak Hebrew and Philip spoke Greek. And then why did Philip have to go get Andrew to go with him? Maybe Andrew knew where Jesus was and, and Philip didn't know. And, and did those Greeks ever actually meet with Jesus? I don't know. They said, we want to see Jesus. And it makes me wonder who exactly they thought they'd be seeing. Jerusalem was, was ringing with, with rumors about Jesus after all. Some were saying that they had actually seen Jesus raise a man from the dead. A guy who had been dead for four days. And wasn't this the same guy who had fed more than 5,000 people with a, a few fish and barley loaves? Hey, you know what? My cousin Joseph said he cured a leper just by touching him. Did they want to see Jesus the miracle worker. Surely some of those gossiping about Jesus that week were talking about the words he said. He spoke words of hope. He spoke of living water that flowed from the heart, about a God who loved the whole world. He forgave sins. He lifted up the downtrodden, and he put the proud in their place. Did they want to see Jesus the prophet? Speaking of the things Jesus said and did, wasn't he this one who had driven out the merchants and the money changers a few years back out of the temple? 
Hadn't he been the one challenging the status quo? Didn't he say he could rebuild the temple in three days? Did they want to see Jesus the revolutionary? When Philip and Andrew find Jesus and they tell him about the Greeks, he answers them in a very strange way. He doesn't say, sure, I'm on the way. He doesn't say, no, not today, thanks. He just seems to go off on this, this tangent about seeds and about fruit and about servants. But I think what's happening is that Jesus is telling them and telling us not what Jesus, not about the Jesus they want to see. He tells, he's telling us what it means to see Jesus. You see, there are folks, there are entire movements that concentrate on one facet of the life and ministry of Jesus Christ or another, minimizing or excluding either purposely or by accident all of the others. There are those who explain away or ignore all of the miracles of Jesus, concentrating on his teachings. There are those who focus on his healings and his miracles, and those who politicize Jesus, adapting his revolutionary and iconoclastic words and actions to their own particular party or cause. But we cannot really see Jesus without seeing Jesus lifted up. We cannot see Jesus without the cross. Yes, one of the ways we can interpret the words lifted up, at least in English, is, 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 is lifting up as is glorifying Jesus. He expects to be glorified and he will indeed be glorified. He will be lifted up from the dead, and he will be lifted up into heaven to sit at the Father's right hand. But he means a very specific thing when he talks about the seed dying and about bringing forth fruit. And there is no one in that crowd that day who misunderstands him when he says, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. They understand these words, but they don't understand the message. Here's how they respond, and it's in the very next verse following our reading. It says this, The crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? They were very offended that the Son of Man would be lifted up. They knew it meant on the cross. They had very specific expectations of who and what Messiah should be. They wanted to see a Messiah who would overthrow Roman rule, kick the pagans out of Judea once and for all, and reestablish the throne and the kingdom of David. They wanted to see a Messiah who, who would restore the former glory of Israel. They wanted to see a Messiah who would end their suffering and return the land to one flowing with milk and honey. They wanted to see an eternal empire, but they wanted to see an earthly empire. Our reading today will mark the last time Jesus will speak in public. The next time this crowd sees him, y'all think about this for a second, the next time this crowd sees him, they will be screaming for him to be crucified. None of them, including the apostles, wanted a suffering servant. Every time Jesus brought up, uh, brought up to, to his death to, to prepare his disciples, they got confused or they didn't understand or they argued about it. There was nothing, that was nothing new. Okay, Now, remember when sp Jesus spoke about being the living bread, it drove many of his followers away in revulsion when he talked about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. This is, this is before he, he established communion. A lot of people followed Jesus just because of the floor show, just because of the free bread, but they were among those shouting in anger and confusion when he started all this, this being lifted up talk. This is not the Jesus they wanted to see. But this Jesus, lifted up in shameful suffering on the cross, lifted up in glorious resurrection on the third day, lifted up to the magnificence of heaven to sit at the right hand of God, our Savior and Advocate. This is the Jesus that they needed to see. People all around us today want 
to see Jesus. What are we showing them? Are we showing them prosperity, Jesus, only interested in making sure you're rich as long as you're giving enough? Are we showing angry, Jesus, judgmental and ready to smite at the slightest provocation? Perhaps we're showing them vending machine Jesus, willing to overlook and give you anything if you pray the right words in the right order at the right time, the correct number of times. Is it political Jesus who agrees only with our specific party line beliefs and candidates? One of these may be the Jesus we want them to see. It may even be the Jesus that they want to see. But they, but we... We need the whole Jesus. We need the real Jesus. We need Jesus who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing. By taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That, by the way, is Philippians 2, 6 through 11. When Jesus heard that the Greeks had come to see him, and started talking about seeds and suffering, perhaps he was saying to them and to us that if we want to see Jesus, we must first look to the cross. We must must first look to Jesus who, though he has all the power in heaven and earth, though he is the, the head of the body and sovereign over the kingdom of heaven, even though he is all these things, he knows intimately what it is to hurt. And yes, I mean the suffering on the cross, But don't forget that Jesus lived day to day as a human being. So Jesus knows what it's like to go without sleep because there's so much on your mind. He knows what it's like to to hurt in your very bones, to be so tired that you can't go another sleep, to be be so without sleep that you'll go to sleep in a boat while there's a storm all around. He knows what it's like to be hungry and thirsty and heartbroken and rejected. And lest we forget... Jesus also knows what it's like to laugh and to love, to have friends and family, to enjoy long conversations late into the night with people you enjoy being around, to make jokes and and share meals and, and watch the sunset. Jesus knows who we are. Jesus has been where we are. And Jesus loves who we are. And when people look to us, and look at us and say, we want to see Jesus. That is the Jesus that they must see. Let us pray. Help us, Lord, every day to show people all of Jesus. And help us every day to grow closer and closer in fellowship with Jesus to the glory of God. We lift up this morning Gene and Howard, the Larry Wheeler family, Aaron and Chris and Tom, Deborah and Pamela, Deanna and Carl and Ronnie, Teresa and Deborah, Jan and Drew, Grace and Rucker and Richard, Dr. Dorset, Stephanie and Marie and Jarita, Pam and Bill and Liz, Kevin and Deb, Rhonda and Kathy, Kevin and Terry, Mr. Rose, Bailey and Madison and Brent, Jim and Norman, SPC Brandon McTavish Engle, Johnny and Joanne and Melissa, those church members and family members and friends that are on our hearts and on our minds, and as always, the U.S. military and their families. Lord, heal, guide, save, and forgive. We pray it in the name of Jesus, your Son, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts 
as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's continue our worship this morning as we receive our tithes and offerings. 